our first stops to get some live baits. Preferably I want some nice sized yakas and slimies. Although a lot of people use pilchard and you do catch a lot of snapper on pilchards, they're not really a natural bait for a lot of the areas we fish. Whereas yakas, slimies, squid, prawns, they're all very much a natural food source for your snapper and bigger fish. So that's what we're going to use. Even if I have some dead, some alive, it doesn't really matter. Perfect size little yucca. Keep quite a few alive. Hopefully stock up on a few. Do keep in mind that recent bag limits changed a couple years ago. They fall under other species, so you're only allowed 20 yakas or each species each so do keep that in mind a few people have been getting done keeping a lot of yakas for bait not realizing they do have a bag limit of 20. perfect little bonito for bait that's ideal one little yak on there as well perfect baits that'd be ideal for a big jew bait that one there we go so you see the front edge of the rock we have some fish sitting there We've got a heap of bait up here, so what we want to do is drop our baits down through this and hopefully hook up. See the rock there? It's a bigger fish sitting in the bottom of it. it sits hard bottom all the way there, but that little spot there, you can see through it a little bit. That indicates there's a cave or a big overhang there. That's where the Jewies love to go. So I'm going to cut it further forward of this. See the baits in front of the rock here. And that's where I want to be drifting my yakka down through that. So I'm going to come a little bit further forward. Maximise my chance. Hopefully catch a good size snapper. Turn around on that now. So we've come forward another 10 meters. Put it in reverse, back into the wind, and I'm good to go. Just slowly letting it down. No resistance. Just see how nicely the motto comes off the reel. And once a fish grabs it, it obviously will start pulling the line. I just want to put a tiny little bit so there's no big overrun. A little bit of resistance there, not too much so the fish doesn't feel it. Wait for him to run for a bit and then I can engage the lever drag and sink the hooks. Definitely see fish close to the bottom there. Nice fish. Pulling plenty of line. Only using 35 pound line. Just drop that live yakka down. Instead of snell, big gun hooks. I've hooked up. Decent sized fish. I actually thought I got to the bottom, so I'm not confident it's going to be a big snapper at this stage. It could be a jewfish. Normally, with the big knobby, you'll get hit on the way down. But I'm positive I got to the bottom. It would normally indicate a jewy. Soon find out. Always nervous. You know you haven't got many shots at big fish a lot of the time, so you don't want to blow it. Make sure everything's right. See some colour. Might be a knobby. Are you 
this too. Oh, it's a nice knobby too. Oh, it's a beautiful fish. Yes! Oh yeah, look at that. There we go guys, 91 centimetres he measured. Beautiful big brizzy snapper. Pretty stoked with that for the first drop. Just getting a nice lump on his head, bit of a nose. Unfortunately, I tried 10, 15 minutes to revive him and let him go and he just wouldn't go down. I vented him, I've tried everything. And he's just lifeless, unfortunately, I think he died. So, no point trying and possibly letting it go down and getting eaten by a shark or anything like that. So, I won't, won't go to waste, I'll take him home and eat him. Do prefer to let these big fellas go, but but pretty happy with that. The first drop, that's awesome. Go back again, see if we can get another one. Possibly a Jew or something like that as well. Cracking start to the day. So there's the rig, guys. Little five ball sinker, swivel, about a meter of trace, down to a set of Snell big gun hooks. A full tutorial on how to tie a Snell rig like that is on my uh, page, so I'll put the link in the description for you. There's a little tiny yellowtail scad, or what we commonly call yakka. So, very effective. It's done the trick. Go back, see if we can get another one. Something's having a bite. Just gonna let it go. It's bloody small, whatever that is. Not real big. Well, there you go, the old poor man's lobster. The old red rock cod. These things inflict the worst pain you've ever come across. You get one of those spines in you, they are absolutely agonizing. Off you go, buddy. See ya, mate. All right, is that bonito I caught earlier? I'm gonna throw that down. I reckon I can see a heap of jewfish on the sander, but they're not taking the live yakkers, so sometimes they can't resist a big bait like this. So I've ganged up a set of 9 big guns, a bit heavier sinker. We've got a little bit of flow here at the moment. I'll throw it down and see what we can catch. As you can see, I'm just lightly pinning it. Hook points are nicely exposed there. The fish does grab that. You want these to tear out quite easily into the fish's mouth. We'll see how we go. Fortunately, I've got that big bonito caught up in the bottom. There must be some big overhangs and caves there. Definitely see it on the sounder. I can't get anything else to bite, but I can definitely see a lot of fish down there. Big school of something. Sometimes the dew won't bite too. They can be real finicky, no matter what you throw in front of them. Yeah, I've got it out. I'll have to go back and um, anchor up on it and put the drone down, I think. If I can't catch anything off, I'm very interested to have a look at this spot. It's always good to see the marine life that hangs around. Anything that's got caves and overhangs usually has pretty decent fish around it. The likes of dew and even mangrove jack and that love these overhangs. i surprised just how many mangrove jack are out in the reefs out here, no matter where you go up and down the east. Australian coastline. In big numbers. Looks like some old rope. Been caught up in some old rope by the looks of it. Bit of nylon green rope. Doesn't look like a wreck to me down there. It's, it's a couple individual rocks. But that's certainly uh, man made. Possibly someone's anchor rope down there at some stage. Someone's lost an anchor.
As I head towards the bottom with the drone, I instantly start seeing a large rock overhang, which confirms what I was seeing on the sounder. As I get closer, I'm blown away by just how big this natural rock formation is, and it makes you wonder how it can continue to hold itself up without collapsing. You'll see at the base of this overhang and several other areas on this rock, there's remains of some old trawler board frames, which indicates that many trawlers have caught their nets up on this rock and lost their trawl gear on it. As I came around the back of the rock, I noticed there was another big overhang with several mangrove jack and dewfish in the background. I could also see some rope hanging from the rock, which could be what I hooked and pulled up moments before putting the drone down. Fortunately, due to the strong current, I couldn't move the drone forward to get a closer look at the fish, so I had to come back to the surface and repeat the process. As I came down for the second time, I went and checked out one of the old trawler board frames sitting on the bottom. After a quick look, I then move across the top of the rock over to where I could see the fish life earlier. Off in the distance, I start seeing a massive school of dewfish, so I slowly move forward hoping that I don't scare them off and get a good look at them. As I move around the back of the rock, I can see the smaller school of fish I could see earlier and watch as the two different schools of fish meet up and merge together. Watching fish in their natural environment like this is truly special. 
Seeing different bottom structures and how fish behave is not only interesting and rare, but also educational, and I drive away from this spot extremely happy with the footage I captured. got sharked. No. No. Oh, come off it. Damn it. Bloody good fish. Just another one to the sharks. Very frustrating. All right, to rig our yakas, we want to line it up. And what I'll do is run the first hook up through its mouth, like so and then pin this last one midway along. So around there, it's good enough distance. We don't want it to be pulling tight so the fish can't swim. And from there, I'm gonna go up through the lip like so. So we um, go up underneath, through his mouth. There we go. He can still swim quite freely. So it's going to reach back home and it did. Yellowtail King or an AJ? Scream back straight for the rock. They're using 35 pound line so it didn't take much to get there. Let's see if I can get smoked again. First one was sharked. Second one smoked back into the reef. I was no match for whatever that was on 35 pound line. I went back to the reef 100 mile an hour. I had to end up cutting about 10 metres off my line, it's frayed all the way up. That spot is absolutely loaded with fish. It looks like a massive school of snapper on it. Wow. A bit of current there, I'm going to actually come down the edge of it. Here we go. Yep. Nice fish. Jesus, some snap on that spot. Far out. First drop, hooked up. There is so many following this fish up, it's not funny. Wow. Beautiful There we go. He's not a massive one, but we can't keep any more big ones, so that's perfect for me. Look at that. Beautiful pan size snapper. It's probably about 55, late 50s. Beautiful fish. He ate that dead yakka that I put down. How cool. There is so many snapper in this spot, it is out of control. It's sort of sounding around most of the day. Obviously put the drone down there. Very disappointed that I couldn't hook one of those Jew. They were just too smart today. 
but uh, coming sort of just after lunch, this sound around this spot just has the biggest show of snapper I've ever seen on it. That is cool. We can put another bait on and go back. There we go, got a fresh tiger squid on this time. Left the hook point nicely exposed there for a better hookup ratio. Go back, see what we can catch. Geez, that looks nice. If I was a fish, I'd eat that. Looks really, really tasty. Like I've got quite a few of them, I've kept some of the big ones to eat, but a few of the small ones I've kept for baits. Make exceptional baits, particularly for Red Emperor. See how well they work on snapper, hey? That's big. That's oh. It's going back for the structure. I'm right at the top. That's why I started to wind up a bit. I don't want to get caught up in it. Oh, he's going to get me back home. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Come out. Come on, turn your head. It's big. I'm really not sure what it is. It felt a bit like a cod. I can see it on the sounder coming up. I think I've got it far enough away from the structure now. Fine line going too hard with only 35 pound line. A lot of pressure on that then. It's coming up on the surface, might be a cobia. Sure is. Nice cobes. Scoff that squid down. It's not a bad cobes too. He's going to play up on this line. They went pretty hard stuff. They normally come up quite easy and then they, uh, they take off and fight hard after that. But he's gone pretty hard straight away. I think we're going to have troubles getting this fish in. He's not a bad size one. just want to wear him out. These things green. They absolutely go ballistic around the boat. Just going to back this drag off a little bit. Lightish line, he's going to go straight back to the bottom again. They normally just give you so much grief. Certainly giving the old venom rod a workout. That's a PE 2 to 5 venom rod, so that's a 7 foot long. I do all my float lining with the 7 footer, it's a little bit longer. Nice, fast actioned rod. It's um Good for even this lighter line. Got some serious pressure on it. Just worried about popping him off. I'm not sure where he's hooked. Too. He won't be done for a while yet. I'll almost be happy to wear this fish right out, get him boat side, try to get the hooks out of him, let him go if I can. But they're just so dangerous around the boat. Really, really hard to try achieve something like that. Put a 
gaff in them, you know about it too, they go ballistic. Back on the surface now. I'm dreaming if I think I'm going to get the hooks out of that and let him go, I reckon it's um, not going to happen. He's quite a big fish. We'll have another, probably two or three runs easy, I reckon. The worst thing you can do is panic when you've got a big cobia on. A lot of people do it. Just take it easy, take your time, wear the fish down. It's usually the gaff shot that lets most people down. Wait for a good clean gaff shot and hang on because once you gaff them, they go off. My big issue is it's going to be try gaff this fish. I've just realised I have a broken gaff in the boat, not my new one. I picked up the wrong one by mistake at 4 o'clock this morning. <laughs> Gonna end in tears. If I gaff with the old one, it'll probably break off. So. All hell will break loose. Good chance I'll lose the fish. But now I've got to come up with a plan on how I'm gonna actually get this thing in the boat. Myself in a bit of mischief here. It's pretty worn out, thankfully. I need to give him a good hit on the head just to slide him right up. That's how we do it. Problem solved. No gaff required. Fish has been killed instantly. Now I can drag it over without the hassle to go I'm absolutely ballistic, throwing any hooks through my hand or legs, which I have had before. Here we go. Oh, it's bloody heavy. Woo. Beautiful big brizzy cobes. And they go hard, they just don't give up. They absolutely just don't stop. He would have had probably 20, 25 big runs. Obviously, I'm not going to have to uh, put all that in there. It'll bore the crap out of you, but he was very hard to get up. Yes. Woohoo! Takes more effort to hold the bloody fish up for the camera than what it does to pull it up. Oh, I'm bugging. Let's go back and see if we hook another one. <laughs> Hopefully, a big snapper this time. Another fish on. I'm out of slack line in it then. You've really got to wind like crazy. Get that slack out so it sinks the hooks. A fresh bonito fillet on this time. I don't think it's going to matter what you put in front of them, they'll eat it. Only a little fella. Perfect little panty. going to be a lot of them down there. To be honest, I think that'll do me. I've got more than enough for a feed there. What I might do is put the underwater drone down. I can't anchor, but I can drift through and just quickly have a quick look as I come through it with the drone, just to see how many of these fellas are down there, because it looks like a lot on the sounder.
safely back in the bar. Pretty cool day really. It was uh, a trip that I really wanted to target the quality fish over quantity. Got to do a lot of sanding, found lots of new ground for future trips so that's really important. Uh, still caught some good fish so that cobra is pretty cool, that give it to me. But, um, they're always fun to catch. But uh, that underwater footage just does it for me. I love that stuff, I could do that all day long. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it too. It's, um, it's just unique and you really get a good look at what the bottom looks like and then to see fish down there like that, particularly those jewies, you know, like I could see them on the sounder and could not catch them. I threw everything at them, you name it, I threw artificials, live baits, dead baits, big baits, no matter what I threw at them, they would not touch one. And then to put the drone down and see so many there, that was crazy. Even mangrove jack with them as well, that was cool. But um, that's just the way it goes, just shows they don't always bite, but it keeps you going back for more. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this episode. Until next time, tight lines.